Hello everyone. I'm going to make a YouTube video here today so that we can walk you through how to do some new things in Aspen Properties. Aspen Properties is uh, something that you'll find on ULab computers. Aspen Properties is also integrated into Aspen Plus. So if you're using Aspen Plus, the uh, properties area, so it'll have properties and simulation, the properties area is going to be the same interface as what we have here. So to start out with your assignment for today, you're going to click on new, which will create a new file. Uh, we're going to go with the blank case. You don't have to click on it. You can just click straight on create. It'll load for a little bit. And when it pops up with the sidebar, that's when you know you've got it. So <clears throat> all of the different areas of this program are in different subfolders. So I can close this up or open it up you'll notice that it's got this kind of half-filled red circle and that means that it requires further input or specification. Now I can either click on this which is what I'll do now and that's what we're going to be clicking on or I could click on next and it will bring me to the next thing that requires input. So that's good to know especially if you're in simulation and you don't know what's missing. So for component ID we're going to type in water now if I type in water or H2O, it will actually look through its database and find the correct component name and alias. And for the second one, I want ethanol. So I'm actually going to misspell it now. And it's going to say, hey, I can't find that for you. That's what the dinging is. And I'll go, OK. So ethanol in the component name, type that in, and it found it. If I wanted to add something else and it wasn't here, um, isopentane, and I were to type that in using this because I know it's something that it won't find, it'll bring up this one for fine compounds. So you'll just type find now and it will find a list of things that match yours. You can click on that one, add selected compound, close that out, and it will add it. So I don't want that there, so I'm just going to push the delete button, delete that. All right, so now that I've got my components defined, I'm going to click on next or just click on methods. It'll bring me over here. Now for this particular one at the time, we're going to specify the method as ideal. So this is choosing the equation of state or the proper method that we're going to use for this. So I can either choose ideal or I can literally type in ideal and it will find it. And then everything's blue. Look down here, required input complete. So we are good to go. So now that we've got ideal, we want to generate some TXY. So I'm going to come up here, home tab, I'm going to come over here to analysis. So I've got pure binary mixture, PT envelope, and some other things if I had more components, but we're going to click on binary. So analysis type, we want TXY. If you're wondering where XY plots are, we'll get to that. So number of intervals, 50 is good. You can increase this. Um, the more you increase it, the more time it's going to take to compute. And then for this particular one, we got it at 1 ATM. So we're just going to push go. And it's going to run and create a TXY diagram for us at that pressure. So now we got this beautiful TXY diagram, which was really simple to make. If for some reason you want multiple ones, so I want one at 2 bar, 3 bar, and 4 bar, I can actually run this again and it will create one at each pressure and you can just read the different ones on there. <clears throat> uh, I, I can see that this would be hard to read but if you know what, I mean if you need this for some reason then you can produce it. Um, so I'm going to close out of that. If you lose your plot and want to recreate one, then you can come over here and just push Run Analysis. And if you can't find this, if you come over here, Analysis, Binary 1, that's the one that we're currently using. So for the second part of this, we want to use the Wilson method. So I'm going to come over here to Methods, and I'm going to change this to Wilson 2. Great. So now it's complaining. It's got this little red circle there. And if I look down there, it's missing some binary interaction parameters for Wilson. Now, if I click Next, it'll just take me there. And you'll notice that it's no longer complaining, and it's got everything it needs. 
Now, the reason it does that is because it wants you to confirm that these are correct values, but what it's doing is it's pulling it from this database, and you can specify which database you want it from. So I'm fine using the Aspen <coughs> version 90 database, but if you need NIST, then you can use the NIST one for whatever you need. Um, and so the, the parameters will change based on uh, which one of these databases you pull it from. So we're good with Wilson. So now we've got Wilson, let's make a TXY diagram from that. So we'll just do the same steps that we had before. And this, this is automatically switched over to Wilson. And I'll show you that over here in calculation options. You'll notice that this is selected to Wilson. So if I push run, I've got this beautiful TXY diagram that shows you how non-ideal the system is. Now, so now we've got our binary here for ideal case and we've got our binary for non-ideal. Now if I want to create an XY plot, then I can come down here under plot and go YX. So this is the binary one case. Or if I want to create the same thing for binary two, come over to binary two and click on it. You see we've got that. And for your assignment, it asks you to merge them. So I will click on merge plot and I will merge it with the binary one XY plot. And there you go, I've got two plots right on top of each other. The other uh, good thing to point out here is that if you go to binary one down here, results, it will list every single data point that it has for you. So you see the pressure is constant throughout, but it's varying the mole fraction. It's varying the total temperature. You can see the K for both of them. You got the vapor mole fraction of each one, the liquid mole fraction. Uh, if you have a VLLE situation, you can also see the liquid two mole fraction. The reason that this is important is that if uh, you generate one of these YX plots and it's not to your liking, so for this case, I've got Y up there and I've got uh, X down here. If you wanted to switch that for some reason or um, something like that, then <clears throat> I can go over here and let's see. So liquid mole fraction of, so if I wanted it in terms of ethanol. So if I click on the, this whole column, I can push, I can hold control alt and push X and that will put this on the X axis. And then over on vapor, I hold control alt Y and that will put that on the Y axis and I hold control alt P to plot it. And it generates this plot for, this is for the ideal system. And you can see that I've got liquid one for, so I've got the X of ethanol on the bottom and the Y for ethanol on the side. So that should be enough information to get you through your first assignment and generate this beautiful XY diagram for uh, both the ideal and the non-ideal case. All right.